Hi, I'm Teacher Im and I prepare videos to help my students score better in their STVM Maths D paper and I hope my video can be helpful for you too. Well, today we are going to talk about probability of event A or event B and the video is coming up right after the intro. <music> When an event A and B are not mutually exclusive, the probability of both event A or B occurs is represented by this formula. Okay, so we write A or B and the symbol will be union. So we will write probability of event A union event B. We will take the union of the two uh, probability. So we have the... Uh, total of a probability A and probability B, the number of probability A, union with uh, probability B, divided by the total sample. Okay, so if we want to write it more detail, in more details, the formula we will be using will be this summation formula, where we write event A, union with event B or A or B, event A or B happening as probability of A plus probability of B, but we have to minus the intersection, which is the center part here, okay, the center part here, for probability A intersect probability B. This, we call it the additional rule for probability. Let's look at an example. What is the probability of a card chosen from a standard deck will be a jack or a diamond? So I have the cards all right, uh, plotted out for you over here. So if I wanted the total sample for this uh, set of cards, that will be 52 cards all together. And let's it be jack or diamond so we need to set out our sample okay and our event so let's j be event of getting jacks so we have four jacks all over in the deck of cards so n will be four okay and the probability of getting jacks will be number of jacks that we get divided by number of samples so we have four over 52. we can simplify that if we want but I will leave it there first. Okay, then we want the diamonds. So the diamonds are this one in the yellow uh, yellow color. Okay, so event of getting diamonds, there are 13 cards all together. So in these 13 cards, the probability of getting event B, which is getting the diamond, will be probability of B equivalent to the number of cards uh, of these diamond cards divided by the sample space so we have 13 over 32 so if we want to calculate according to the question is jack or a diamond okay so probability of getting jack or a diamond we need to take note of the intersection is there any similar uh, cards in between them so we notice that there is one so for getting jack intersect with b uh, which is the diamond well there will is one cut from what we see here so that is one over 52. now to finish up this question because the question asks for probability of jack or diamond so j union with b so we will get the probability of j plus probability of b minus the probability of jack and diamond okay j and b so what we are going to get is something like this and we can press the calculator we can get it in decimal places or we can also calculate it in fraction form but please remember you need to simplify if you have a fraction okay that is example number one let's look at this second one what is the probability of getting a number greater than 3 or an event, uh, even number when we roll a die? So if one right die is rolled, okay, 1, we will get the sample S. 
one, two, three, four, five. We, we just list out the sample, okay? Because there is only one. We roll, we do it once. So the number of samples we have six. First, we need the event of a number greater than three. So let the event of getting number greater than three is four, five, six. So that is three number in that situation. And we want an even number. Okay, so of course the probability of getting the uh, number greater than 3 is 3 over 6. We can simplify it or we can just leave it there first. And then we want an, an even number. So event of getting an even number, so you will have 2, 4, 6. And the, probability, uh, the number of even numbers that we get from this list is 3. Okay, so the probability of getting an even number will be 3 divided by the sample space, which is 6. Okay, is there any similarity in them? So we look at here, we have 4 and 6. Okay, here also got 4 and 6. So the intersection of event A intersected by event N with event B is 4 and 6. So the number of event A and event B happening is 2 element. Okay. So we have the probability of event A and event B will be the intersection of that. So we have 2 over 6. Once we have done with that, we will be calculating event uh, of getting the probability of getting the number greater than 3 or an even number. So if we have that, we have the formula which you already know just now from just now so we will get uh, take the probability of a plus probability of b minus the intersection of a and b okay so that's the answer we need in this next example in a class of 30 students it is found that three students join the band 10 students play sports and 5 other students join both the band and play sports. Find the probability that a student is in the band or play a sport or both. Alright, so the sample that we have, we do not need to list them out this time. We just take directly from the question. Then... There are three students who join the band. So we will let the event be as so. Okay. So for this type of question, it is best. Okay. It is best to draw a band diagram to help you uh, digest with the information that they gave you. So according to this uh, Venn diagram, we have three students who join the band. So A. 10 students who play sports. That is for event B. However, there are five more students who have both of them, who join both of them. So we need this when we create the events. So let's say B, be event of joining the band. Okay, so when the students doesn't have a band diagram, they will be considering just three students who join the band. However, in this Venn diagram, it shows that the event of joining the band is around 8 students. Okay, the number of students who join the band is 8. Therefore, the probability of num students joining the band divided by the sample space will be 8 over 30. You can simplify that, but I will leave that there first. Let's look at the second one. Let's G be an event of playing sport so we have playing sport we have 10 students however they say five more students also play the sports so the total of students playing sports actually we have 15 okay so the probability of uh, students playing sport will be 15 over 30 and we can simplify that or i will just leave it there and finally, the students who join the both the event, so the sports and the games, okay, so the uh band and the sports, sorry. 
Okay, so the inside the question they already mentioned there are five, so I will leave it there. And the probability of getting that, okay, of playing the band and sports will be five over thirty. That's the probability. So let's finish up the question. The question say find the probability that a student is in the band or plays a sport or both. So for this question, we will have B union with G. Okay. So what will happen is we will have the probability of B plus the probability of G minus the intersection. As we know, that is the formula. So we will put in the details that we have and we will calculate the probability. It is so simple, right? So these are cases where these events are not mutually exclusive. So what if the events are mutually exclusive? So in my previous lesson, if I, you have not seen it, I already made a special video on just mutually exclusive. So mutually exclusive are events that could not happen together. So let's say if I tell you that an event is mutually exclusive, then the formula that we have has already will be changed. So it will be also A union B is still the same. But however, because they cannot happen together, there is no intersection between them. So when we want to calculate the probability of A union B, it is equals to the probability of A plus probability of B. Let's check this out. Okay, in this question, what is the probability of choosing one card from a standard deck and getting a queen of heart or an ace of heart? So queen of heart and ace of heart are two different cards are two different cards. Therefore, we will say that they are actually mutually exclusive. They cannot happen because they inside the story, they say the probability of choosing one card. So when we pull out an ace of heart, it is impossible to be pulling out at the same time the queen of hearts because they only needed one card. So the sample space that we have is 52, that's definitely it. And if we want Queen of Heart or Ace of Heart, so I will let A be event of getting the Queen of Heart, that's only one of it. So the probability will be 1 over 52. And getting a Ace of Heart, I also have only one Ace of Heart, okay, in the fair card. So the probability is also 1 over 52. So if I want uh, the probability of getting a queen of heart or an ace of heart, I just need to add them together following the formula for mutually exclusive event. So I will take the two probability, I add them together, that's what I'm getting for the answer. You can leave your answer in fraction form or in decimal places. In STVM, the decimal places have to be for significant feature. Let's look at another one. A box containing five red balls, three green balls, and two yellow balls. If one ball is randomly selected, okay, only one, what is the probability of selecting either a red or a yellow ball? So this sample space is th there are 10 balls, 5 plus 3 plus 2, okay, there are 10 sample space. I do not need to list it out. I do not need to bring out a tree diagram. I do not need to build a table because it is just basically sample, 10 sample inside the box. Okay, now they want a rate. So letting event of getting a red ball is 5. So the probability of getting a red ball will be 5 over 10 because I have 5 red balls. Then I want the yellow ball. So the yellow ball, getting a event of getting a yellow ball will be 2 because I only have 2 yellow balls. So the probability of getting a yellow ball is 2 over 10. 
Now, in this question, because we only want to take out one ball, therefore, this is a mutually exclusive event. Because when I take out a red ball, it is impossible I can take out a yellow ball. So both the red ball and yellow ball will never happen together. So this is a mutually exclusive event. So for this case, when I want to calculate the probability of A union B, I need to take the probability of A plus the probability of B. Therefore, I will take these two probabilities that I calculated just now and put them together. Voila, I'm done. The answer is 7 over 10. So, do you understand what I just explained just now? If you do, please hit the like button to support me and motivate me to create more video like this for you. If you have not subscribed, do subscribe because in my next lesson, I'm going to talk about how to determine an event if they are mutually exclusive or independent. I really love to see you there. Bye, and I will see you in my next video. See ya!